Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, friends, I wanted to discuss with you uh, Hebrews chapter 10. I had mentioned to you that I wanted to come back to this and talk about this with you. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now let me point out to you real quick though, uh, where it says the word is, and one another, uh, those are italicized, not in the original Greek. So if we read it the way it should be, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I told you I really felt strongly that there was far more to this than what meets the eye and how, especially in the day we're living in now where this alleged pandemic uh, of Corona is causing a complete shutdown of the world. Even churches being forbidden to keep the gospel, even a, one of our amendment rights, besides free speech, First Amendment, besides that, but also the, the, the right to assembly, um, taking away that right right out of the Bible there when God says, forsaking not the assembling of your of ourselves together as the manner of some but exhorting and we'll just throw the one another in there and so much the more as you see the day approaching the fact that the beast system is on the rise right now the crown they're getting ready to do the Kabbalah corona crown president trump by the way, during the pandemic, managed to find time to get with a Chabad organization and sign once again your rights away under the seven Noahide laws, right? And as all this is going on, then there were some folks there that had sent me a Facebook message to be able to become our friend there. And uh, I had responded uh, to them. And as I did, Right on their channel was this man right here, Pastor Tony Spell, an apostolic minister who had been arrested. Uh, in this picture here, he's actually getting out of jail for keeping that very commandment of God, forsaking not the assembly. Uh, I want to play some of this for you real quick. So let me back up for this here. This was actually posted by Central City News. They're the ones that have been covering this story here. Uh, and uh, the pastor was released, but I'm going to back up to the actual Facebook page where I first saw this at, and uh, that was, like I said, some brand new folks there that had sent us a friend request, and I don't always, I'm not always able to get to the uh, friend request very often, um, but this was the article right here, and uh, that was shared with us there. And I think you'll see, you'll see their name pop up in just a moment here. I just want to give credit to them for that. But let me, let me share with you this arrest of this pastor for keeping, for actually keeping the Word of God uh, by assembling together as they should be. All right, there we go. Donna, Donna and Kevin right there. Uh, excuse me, Donna. Yeah, I think it's Donna and Kevin. I thought that's what I saw there. Uh, but at any rate there, oh, uh, let's see. Um, Let's listen into the, the to the video there. But Donnie, uh, uh, I think it's I think it's Kevin was written on there. So, so Tony, uh, uh, the, 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 this, this this pastor Tony was being arrested, arrested right here. The city chief. Uh, this uh, isn't, by the way, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, if I'm not mistaken. There, where he was arrested at. That's his attorney there uh, uh, that is present there at his arrest. Uh, according to the attorney, these are these are trumped up charges that he was being accused of, and uh, and let me just kind of move forward in the video because after he's arrested, uh, they're going to talk to the attorney, and uh, and as well as his father, who also is a pastor. The attorney there was talking to the chief of police there, and uh, so let me just kind of here we go right here. Get to play here for you in just one second here, and I'll be. Joe Long, you want to make a comment? Joe Long, attorney for Pastor Spell. Yeah, the uh, the police uh, have a job to do. They have uh, arrested Pastor Spell. Uh, he's being taken to the parish prison for booking. After that, a bond will be set, and uh, he'll be released on bond. We look forward to defending uh, Pastor Spell in this case. Any fair viewing of the video will show you that this is a trumped up charge. No one would ever be arrested for. Assault with those facts, but they 
want to shut the church down any way they can, and so this is their plan B. All right, so he was saying, uh, the audio is, is, is very, very poor on here, but they were saying that, uh, that uh, th this is plan B, that they're, uh, they arrested the pastor, plan B there. Uh, his father uh, will speak up here in just momentarily here. So we'll listen just for a moment there. Audio, again, is kind of poor. Uh, I will stop the audio on, uh, so it doesn't, well, don't even need the audio on my side anyway there. But uh, but it's still the buses that will be going in the background there make it very difficult to hear uh, what his father is saying. But they're going to continue to carry church. They're going to, uh, to not forsake the assembly. Uh, but then I'm going to go back to that scripture because, as I said, it's far more relevant than what we realize. Let's first listen into this here. Uh, no, I, I just echo what Joe said. Uh, we are being targeted because we are exercising our First Amendment rights. Not only that, we are using the Word of God. The Word of God off of uh, is, is, the, is, what, is the book we go by. And we are just, from day one, we have decided we're not going to disassemble. We're going to go assemble in the church. Now, if he's not here tonight for services, uh, what what is the plan? Well, if my son can't be there, if my son can't be there, the assistant, Cornelius Williams, was stepped up for the pulpit and preached. If he's not there, I'll preach. But we will have church tonight. We invite everybody to come and support a pastor spell. The more support we can have. This is the nose of a camel in a tent door. This is an attack on our civil liberties. This is a... He's saying this is an attack on our civil liberties, just so you know that. We overreach of our city officials, our police departments, our mayors, our governor. That's why there are protests all over America. Now he's talking about it's an overreach by uh, the city officials, by the mayor, by the governor. And he goes on to say this is why there's protests all across America. Now the one thing is, the, 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 uh, the, the father of Pastor Tony there uh, goes into President Trump as if President Trump is really there backing what they're trying to do. But unfortunately, as I said, uh, un what many of these ministers have no idea about is that President Trump is not on the side of the, the church. He is, in fact, on the side of the Chabad organization that will bring about the Noahide laws that will come against the believers. Uh, but we do stand in solidarity with believers that are willing to keep the Word of God and not forsaking the assembling of themselves together. In fact, if we had our church as well, we would be doing the exact same. In fact, if they did it all across America, how much more difficult would it be? But let's go back to the Hebrews, because as I said, this is such a profound prophecy here, and I want you to really see this. So let's back up, verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of our, assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some. So letting you know some churches are not going to assemble, but there's a reason. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Well, now he's going to tell you what that day is. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Now I have had a different opinion of that scripture for many, many years. In other words, like, for example, I would think, well, you know, we come to know Jesus Christ and, uh, and then we fall away and there's no more sacrifice for sin if we fall away from after we come to know Jesus Christ. But it, this is dealing with the very last days because he's talking about forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day approaching is in verse 27. Then we're going to come back to that verse 26 again. Let's look at that. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Well, wow, reminds me of Revelation 11, if you, if you don't say, right? But notice, though, right? It's looking 
but a certain fearful looking for, for judgment and fiery indignation. We're coming to the day when Christ will return and when he does, he's going to bring about a judgment that will be with fire and brimstone. Then verse 29 and 30, Oh, how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be the worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite under the spirit of grace. That's what you preachers out there are doing that have forsaken Jesus Christ and you've taken that Talmudic, diabolical, devilish, ungodly, Kabbalistic, ungodly, unholy, antichrist spirit and you have decided to stand with that versus Jesus Christ here in this day. And knowing that that plan that they're doing, you ministers that you sit there with your little 501c organization and you're telling the people, just obey, obey the government and what they're saying to do. Don't forget about Romans 13 now. we got to obey the government. Nonsense! It's better to obey God is what it's better to do. But you're out there and you pander out there to these bunch of politicians and everything because they got you. And you know they got you and you can't do much about it. You're not willing to take and stand for the Word of God. So you're willing to forsake the assembly as the Scripture says even though you know that day is approaching. Right? That's why God is speaking to you, ministers. Right? He says, so he goes on, Oh, how much sore punishment suppose you shall be worthy, the, uh, be, shall he be the worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God? Because you hold up Israel as some great beacon of light when they need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and you have trodden the Son of God under your foot. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. Alright? Let God deal with it. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Okay? But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great afflictions, partly while as you were made a gazing stock, but by reproaches and afflictions and partly while it should became companions of them were so, that were so used. So here we are. We have come down to that day where the forsaking of the assembling of ourselves together has become the norm. But it just so happens to be that it's at a time of the indignation judgment and fiery indignation of the Lord. Alright? And then God goes on to say after He tells you that for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. As the gospel of Jesus Christ in its purity begins to go forth now clearly showing you that this Noahide movement is of Satan. And then you turn your back on it. And he goes on to say, but a certain fearful looking of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. God comes and destroy this world with fire. And then he reminds you, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose you shall be, be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. I told you there was more to this than what I realized. And it is. So, I stand here with these brothers here, though they may not realize that President Trump is not their Savior. In fact, he's actually the enemy to the church. But they just blind on that issue there. But God bless them for having the courage to stand. And by the way, let me just show you something here. We'll go over here to this uh, news channel here, Central City News, because like I said, they continued to cover uh, the whole thing, and they did have their church service that night. We'll play it in here for you real quick. So they, they, they were having church.
So, and we just go a little further down. Let's see how far we can get in here. And as we got into their service there, there he is. There's, there's Tony there. So anyway, he did, he did make the bail, did get out. And I don't know the whole story behind everything on this as of yet, but we wanted to at least share that with you. And we do hear more and more that there's protests all across America. Stand for the Word of God. That's what I would say do. Stand for the Word of God. We shouldn't have to be afraid. Especially with so many. And by the way, we're also hearing doctors that have been arrested put in psychiatric wards for coming against the mainstream narrative. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.